Whether it be for snacking on during movies, feeding livestock or biofuel, corn has great significance that continues to benefit us directly and indirectly. But it didn't always look like the yellow crop we all recognise today. So how exactly did it evolve? Maize's mysterious origin sparked controversy across the cornfield during the 1930s, with two main hypotheses from Reeves and Mangelsdorf and Beadle. The first hypothesised it arose from the hybridisation of a close relative with the grass tripsacum, while Beadle proposed maize was domesticated via artificial selection from the oldest wild maize. Flash forward to the early 2000s, Beadle's hypothesis was confirmed. Genetic and archaeological evidence found that maize was domesticated 10,000 years ago in Mexico from its wild progenitor Tiacinti, or Z. maize subspecies Pava glumis. But why did it take so long to find this out? Well, let's have a closer look. Tiacintis have an abundance of branches and tillers, each branch containing several ears with only some kernels enclosed in hardened fruit cases, whereas maize is unbranched with many kernels attached to a cob, making it completely dependent on humans for propagation. Following domestication, maize was improved extensively, creating hybrid mazes highly suitable to current agricultural techniques. These distinct differences motivated scientists to find the loci and genes involved. In 1972, Beadle estimated that four to five major loci were involved in maize domestication based on experimental populations. This was substantiated in 1993 where five major quantitative trait loci were mapped for these trait differences. Afterwards, Wright et al. analysed 774 genes using single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, finding only 2-4% were selected for during domestication and improvement. Prior studies also identified key domestication genes like TB1 and TGA1 that dramatically changed morphologies such as plant architecture and hardened fruit cases respectively. However, recent developments in next-generation sequencing technologies like genome-wide resequencing used in comparative population genomics of maize domestication and improvement by Hufford et al. allows for substantially greater insight into these selected regions. To identify regions that underwent selection during maize domestication and improvement, Hufford et al. utilized HapMap2, a haplotype map showing gene groups that are inherited collectively on one chromosome. HapMap2 sequenced 103 inbred lines from Tiacintes, Landraces, and improved lines to create 55 million SNPs, a great abundance of polymorphic markers. 75 wild, Landrace, and improved lines were firstly resequenced and then mapped to the B73 reference genome to locate sequence differences in the form of high quality SNPs. They found that maize Landraces retained 83% of genetic diversity from Tiacinti. While this may indicate a domestication bottleneck is occurring whereby maize's diversity is much less than its wild progenitor, landrace lines had excessive rare SNPs. This shows us two things. Variation had already started to recover in most of the genome during improvement, and selection was much stronger during domestication. Next, they wanted to know which loci were most affected by selection and decided to scan for selective sweeps using the cross-population composite likelihood ratio, XPCLR. Selective sweeps occur when the increased frequency of a new beneficial mutation changes the variation of neutral SNPs nearby, ultimately reducing genetic variation, something that XPCLR takes advantage of. This method searches for genomic regions where allele frequency changes at a locus occurred too quickly to be caused by random drifts. Clusters of adjacent areas of high XPCLR were grouped into features that represented the effect of just one selective sweep. So what did they discover? 484 domestication and 695 improvement loci affected by selection, which covered a whopping 7.6% of the maize genome, much larger than in previous studies. Domestication features average selection was 0.015, way higher than 0.0011 across the remaining genome, which is displayed by marks such as elevated differentiation, low nucleotide density, and excessive high-quality SNPs. On the flip side, improvement candidates had a much lower selection of 0.003, giving some evidence for stronger selection during domestication. As each feature is caused by one selective event, genes with the highest score are the most likely candidate of being directly targeted for selection and domestication or improvement. We could definitely use these for analysing existing QDLs and identifying new candidate maize genes in the future. Overall, the domestication features identified in the present study demonstrate much greater evidence of selection than official domestication genes like TB1 and TGA1. We can see that domestication targeted multiple genes of diverse functions and locations that affect unexplored phenotypic traits. This comparative study has major implications on just how complex and amazing crop evolution can be, showing just one kernel of the crop.